Are you shopping for a picky architect that doesn't like anything? I'm a picky architect and I don't like anything. It's not exactly true. There are some cool things that I like and today I'm going to talk to you about them. I'm going to give you a list of books, a clothing brand, and a brand of housewares from $20 to $500. Let's go! The first is Taste by Stephen Bailey. This book is so good that I can't finish it. What does that even mean? You ever talk to somebody that just seems to have endless wisdom, endless references for, about different ideas, books, places that seem so interesting that you have to put the book down and check it out? That's the one problem I have with this book but I love it. Stephen Bailey is very well known in the UK, not so much in the US, I, at least I haven't met any architects talking about his books, um, but he's kind of hilarious. If you like British humor, I do. It spans the gamut from Frank Lloyd Wright to Sir Joseph Reynolds classic paintings, posters, stereo equipment, and blue jeans. Cheeky! How do you even start to define taste? It's like asking a doctor to define pain. It varies depending on the customs, the culture, the time that you're talking about. Stephen Bailey with his wealth of knowledge and his ease of delivery makes it a really interesting read and a book that I highly recommend. I'm reading his most recent book, Value What Money Can't Buy. It's a much lighter read than taste. I have to read a couple quotes from the back. He has the knack of getting ahead of everybody with values that turn out to be permanent. He has the attention span of an acid-crazed hummingbird hawk moth, but when he craps, it glows. I like design theory, but I don't want to get into academic jargon-filled books. And that's another thing that I love about Stephen Bailey. He doesn't mess around with that. He talks in a language that um, is very educated, but is not talking in some kind of obnoxious jargon. And I appreciate that. You want a pretty good house? If your architect is designing houses and they might really like to read Pretty Good House if they don't already have it. It's a fairly new book and it was written by several people, builder, architects, designers that are very well respected in the building community. And it's a great book that fills a gap between what people are building on average versus the high-end passive house design lead buildings that people have to jump through lots of hoops for. Not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody can bother with that kind of paperwork and etc. But they want a house that is pretty good. And so they broke it down in a way that's easily digestible for homeowners too. So if you're thinking about building a house um, I would check out this book and anybody who's designing houses would benefit from taking a read and they cover everything things to know before you start how to be a pretty good client because it's, it's not a one-way street calculating payback it's a huge issue with green design with any, any kind of expensive building where you put something in, it's gonna be more expensive up front. Is there a payback? Sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. And it's a math that only you can answer. I also love that they have details that are easy for a layperson to understand in addition to line work drawings. Um, but it's great to see it in 3D. You know, I don't have to look at line drawings if I have something so good to see. Lots of things to avoid. 
materials, additives, and products that you want to avoid and why. And my last highlight of the book, a pretty good garage, because why should your garage suffer? So I highly recommend this book. Every architect I know that has it really likes it, and so do I. Buildings Don't Lie. Now, this is a book that architects can have as a reference guide on their table and benefit every day. And it's also a book that if you're the type of homeowner that wants not just to know what to do, but why you should do it, this is a great book for you. Here's some highlights. Prevent flooding by frozen pipes. Nobody wants that. Here's an explanation why. Building a virtually soundproof wall. I get that question all the time. Better than poison. What powder to sprinkle in the walls when you're renovating? How to make your ducts airtight. There's so much information in here. And when I spoke to Henry, you know, he was like, well, if you read the book uh, from spot to spot, you'll, you'll get tons of information. If you read it from beginning to end, it'll change your whole perspective on building. Now, clothing. So your architect's wearing black all the time and, oops, I'm wearing black. I don't always wear black, but what I'm wearing now is a brand that your architect would love. What do architects like? Simple, well-constructed, hangs nicely, Hanro. It's a Swiss brand that does mainly sleepwear, loungewear, underwear. So you might not get it for your cousin. Most of their stuff is underwear and it's so nice. If I could just have just Hanro in my underwear closet, I would be very happy. It just, I can't express how light it feels, how nice it feels on your skin. It makes everything else feel like sandpaper. And so Honro is something that would be super appreciated and feels great. And it's something that every architect would appreciate. Housewares. So one housewares brand that I personally love and that has a huge variety of beautifully designed products is Alessi. It's an Italian brand near the lakes of Milan and they hire world-class designers to design all sorts of products. One of my favorites is a toaster. And I just love my Alessi toaster. I'm not showing you pictures of it because I don't want to drag crumbs everywhere. And I don't think you can buy it anymore, but I'll share a beauty photo of it that you're seeing right now. I also have a lot of flatware, or do you call it cutlery? Now tell me, do you call it cutlery or flatware? Well, whatever you call it, I've got a huge collection of that that we get to use every day because if you're not using something luxurious every day, you're missing out. It feels so nice to eat every meal with a lessy cutlery or flatware, if you will. Now here's a couple of more examples. Here's an example of one of their teapots. This is a famous teapot designed by Frank Gehry. If you know anything about him, you know he likes fish. Um, and look, I've never used it. I've had this for six years, seven years, eight years. I've had it for about seven years and I've never used it, but I love it because I look at it every day on, on my shelf. This is one of their most famous products. It's a juicer designed by Philippe Stark. And I have used this a few times, um, but mainly it just hangs out next to the teapot. I will have links in the description to the books, to the products. Also in the description will be a blog post to a longer list of books categorized by design theory, construction, entrepreneurship, you name it, for young architects or experienced architects who want to see a list of books with specific recommendations. So check that out. Check out Honro, check out Alessi. Come back when you hear from your architect 
Tell me what they think of it. Did they like it? Did they hate it? I want to know either way.